In the hallowed annals of horse racing history, there exists a secret tradition that has captured the hearts of millions. A legacy that weaves through time like a tapestry of valor and triumph. The Kentucky Derby, an emblem of greatness, an ode to the equine spirit, and a symbol of unyielding passion. For over a century, the thundering hooves have echoed across the venerable grounds of Churchill Downs as champions emerge to etch their names in the immortal pages of horse racing folklore. From the unforgettable Sir Barton to the legendary Secretariat, each stride has been a symphony of grace and courage. And within this historic realm of flesh and blood, bonds between horse and rider are forged lasting through the ages. But as the world evolves, so too does the spirit of competition. Today, as we venture into the virtual domain, 
we pay homage to the pioneers of a new legacy. A legacy that fuses tradition with innovation. And the pursuit of greatness extends beyond the confines of reality. Welcome to this season's virtual Kentucky Derby. Where the frontier of horse racing meets the boundless realm of Web3. Here, in this digital arena, horses of pure code and dreams, crafted by visionaries, gallop, fueled by the passion of their creators and riders alike. Within this matrix of pixels, hearts pound with anticipation as the virtual thunder ignites the souls of virtual fans worldwide. The legacy of the Kentucky Derby is not only preserved, but elevated to new heights, where innovation and tradition intertwine in perfect harmony. As we celebrate the past and embrace the future, remember that the essence of horse racing lies not solely in the tangible, but in the intangible. The relentless spirit that transcends the realm of flesh, steel and circuits. It's the desire to triumph, the will to conquer, and the dream of making history. So, let us unite in admiration for these majestic athletes, both real and virtual, as we ride the currents of time and create new legacies that will echo through generations to come. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are again. It's time for some horse business. Friends and enthusiasts, twilight descends on our 12th season. We stand at the finale of our 10th virtual Kentucky Derby. Today's not an end, but a shining milestone. Our collective voyage through this captivating universe we all reside in. Photo Finish Live. Our vision has been bold, a beacon from the start revolutionizing the essence of horse racing through the expansive realm of Web3 technology. This season has been a testament, a vibrant tapestry woven from our joint aspirations. Your passion, your commitment, and feedback have transformed Photo Finish Live into the zenith of virtual sports. Our partnership with Churchill Downs has been the cornerstone. We're melding the timeless thrill of the track with groundbreaking digital innovation. We're stretching our bonds from local to global, and for which we are eternally grateful. But at the heart, the core of Photo Finish Live lies you, our robust, our spirited community. It's your unwavering support, your fiery zeal. It has fostered a sanctuary where friendships have flourished like spring blossoms. Alliances are forged in the heat of competition and the spirit of the race flies as free and wild as a Mustang across the plain. As we pause on this threshold, let's weave together our reflections, anticipations. This moment is not a curtain call, but a beacon illuminating the path to new adventures, filled with thrilling races, transformative updates, the unfolding of uncharted territories. So as we bid farewell to this season, let's unite in a chorus of celebration. Cheers, put up your glasses, toast to our shared journeys, the unexplored horizons ahead. And to you, the heart and soul of the Photo Finish Live community, my deepest gratitude for lifting this season to all new heights. So let's take a moment, take a breath, a single collective breath, savor the triumphs, warmly open our arms, and invite newcomers into this vibrant tapestry that is Photo Finish Live. A world where each race is a story, every heartbeat, a drum roll to glory. Let's take a look at how Photo Finish works. Welcome to the thrilling world of Photo Finish Live, the revolutionary virtual horse racing ecosystem that brings the excitement of real horse racing straight to your fingertips. Brought to life by Third Time Entertainment, Photo Finish Live offers a unique and immersive experience like no other. Picture this, you're not just a spectator, you're a real life owner and breeder of horses in this captivating virtual world. Engage in heart pounding races against other players where real money is on the line. 
The stakes are high and the rewards are yours for the taking. There's a host of innovations that set Photo Finish apart from the competition such as the most advanced genetic breeding algorithm in the world and the ability to own racetracks and share their monetary rewards. In Photo Finish, you will create generations and generations of unique offspring, each carrying the legacy of its ancestors. The True to Life genetic system offers endless possibilities for breeding, and your decisions will determine the future champions of the track. All the while owning a proportional share in a racetrack via Crown, our cryptocurrency, allows you to share the game's success. Step into a world where four weeks in real life correspond to one in-game year. Witness the passage of time as each new season brings fresh opportunities and challenges. Thousands of races await you in every season, from entry-level maiden races to the highest stakes premier graded events. Horses of every level and price point have a chance to hit the podium and breed up over time. With its commitment to realism, Photo Finish Live brings the thrill of horse racing to life. As the seasons pass, horses retire to breed and eventually die, mirroring real-world horse racing to ensure long-term sustainability. Embrace renewed opportunities to showcase your skills and strategies, ensuring the excitement never ends. Are you ready to start your legacy in the world of Photo Finish Live? The tracks await, the competition beckons, and fame and fortune favor the bold. Become a part of this one-of-a-kind virtual horse racing ecosystem and let your dreams run wild. Join us today and embark on an unforgettable journey. The Sport of Kings awaits your presence in Photo Finish Live. Well, welcome back, my uh, partner in crime, Fib. How are you this fine Saturday evening, March 9th? How are you doing? The mullet is in full effect. It is. It's a little damp right now. It's like a little ratty. But, uh, you know, we proceed. It's, very it's professional, been rainy. Very professional. Thank you. Yes. Well, I did have to. Sh I, feel, I feel like I should shower for the derby, right? You got to get dapper. You're mm -hmm. looking great as usually in the glasses. The suit. My God. Yep. This is our yep, This is our you. leader. Can you, could you follow this man into battle? I could uh ladies and gentlemen that's right dude you know that i i had to go with the heavy imagery in the opening statement the the i was oh, pumped my, my own statement there um i was crying i i, wrote, I worked for weeks i worked for weeks writing that um just really trying wow. to make sure that, <laughs> amazing you know, yeah i don't know if people know that i worked on that for weeks literally oh, uh hired beauty. a team script writers Anyway, welcome everybody. Um, a lot of new faces in the chat. A lot of new folks here watching this race. The the virtual Kentucky Derby is upon us. Uh, this is such a a great moment as we cruise ever more quickly into the real Kentucky Derby. It is fast approaching, two months away. Uh, it's uh, getting scary now <laughs> as we get so close to the real yes. thing. We we're now got our some of our travel booked. We're going to be there. Thirty Whoa. plus community members are going to be there. At Churchill Downs, the Churchill Downs in the Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, hopefully the folks in the community know you do have to wear a suit. Uh, maybe you need to learn that as well, Fib. You do have to wear pants. Uh, you have to wear pants? Maybe, you, know, you should. Maybe. Oh, yeah. I don't know about Man, pants is tough, dude. Pants? <laughs> hot in May in uh, Kentucky? Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we're starting off tonight's action with a uh, really thrilling race. I mean, I, I kind of was in and out of uh, town this week, and I know that you've did a lot of the work with the, the team to put this race on prime times nine. So it's a little nine. breakdown. What is this race? It looks like this is stacked. Uh, what did you do while I was gone? This looks amazing. It absolutely. It's absolutely stacked. I mean, the, the action is stacked. The, the race is stacked. So what prime times dimes is this is the second, um, the second, uh, exhibition race basically that's been put on by Solonaut stables, completely funded and sponsored by Solonaut stables. Um, it basically, it's a Philly only juvenile race, uh, which the every single participant gets 25% off breed with um, with primetime primetime, one of the, you know, Solonaut Stables known for having these very strong breeding horses, uh, having basically the top breeding revenue in the game, just these monsters in the stable and primetime times we're happy to, to help facilitate um, primetime times, which gives the winner an opportunity to free primetime breed a thousand dollars. Yeah. And uh, 
ba basically every single one of these horses is a is a prospective mate for prime time to create to uh, the next the, the next champion um we have to assume none of these are descendants of primetime. This is all uh, they're, they're vying for a shot yeah. at primetime. <laughs> you uh, would hope that it. that's the case. Um, you hope not. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so Big be a field, mistake, right? I mean, a, a giant 20 horse field. 20 horse Everyone... field. In a massive pot. Massive pot. Yeah. 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 Wow. Well, this is amazing. Like, 160? like, it's insane. Um, Starts in about three minutes. So uh, I know our, our, our revered race caller mo will be down at the track it looks like this track uh was this this race was hosted by one of our community members too la jolla fields they put it on at their oh, track yeah, as well. the, yeah yep amazing la jolla, it's uh, now the vision is starting to come true isn't it it's sort of like the community the the players have now become the the creators the the tables have turned on us fib are we powerless or is it slowly we still have some power I mean, the, the idea, obviously, you know, who, who am I preaching to the choir right now? But it's the, you know, <laughs> the vision is that we that we share that we share the ownership of this game with our players. And, you know, the more the further we get along and the more that we see these uh, player driven and player driven initiatives, which I, I really would love to encourage. You know, I've, I've actually had a bunch of people come to me recently with these ideas for events. And of course, we're happy to facilitate those for you guys. We love it. We love this community driven element to our game. Um, and this race was, of course, created on behalf of Solna, but there's others coming. Uh, I know there's Sunday programs, Monday programs coming. I mean, this is part of it. And, and of course, the La Jolla racetrack, uh, that's a player-owned racetrack. This is an event put on a player-owned racetrack. The revenue goes back uh, to this player primarily because they are the majority holder of this racetrack. Um, that's just how it works. It's just part of the game. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It, it really is. Uh, I mean, those that are new that, you know, maybe have just joined and are excited to even get a shot at maybe joining this race or looking at this race. It is a pretty interesting idea here that over time, uh, again, uh, players in the community, players can can host their own exhibition races and do whatever they want. Um, and we are starting to see this uh sort of start to take shape and you know there's a lot of extra things to build out here there's a lot of things we got to make sure that you know people can um do to manage i suppose these these races themselves or the track owners working yes. with the track owners to, to to remove us from the equation but for right now i think we're here to kind of you know kick off these prototypes and really uh see it happen and this is really cool so best of Absolutely. luck to all involved Jeez, did you say a thousand cash and the breeding a thousand cash uh, and a free breed, yeah. Wow, a breed. A breed? What's prime time's breeding uh, stud fee right now? What is the stud fee? I, know. I mean, up uh, there, not cheap. It's, it's, I think it's high. A thousand. Yeah, so probably a thousand dollars to thousand dollars. About a two thousand dollar value. Cash. Yeah. All right. Well, best of luck to participants. My goodness. Do you have any uh, favorites? I know we've only got a few seconds till kicks off. Do you have a winner that you're going to pick here? I'll take Stormwind, uh, well, forty-one I mean, to one. I'll just. I can I don't tell, know. Yeah. I'm just thinking that. The thing about the thing about this race, I'm just going to say real quick, um, we have about five seconds, but the ultimate favorite sun and snow out of Blue Elder, Blue Elder, super strong, stable. I think the creator of the first SS horse in the game, as far as we understand, there's horses here that are 50 to one. There's horses, you know, I'm th this horse in a wow. field of 50 to one, on, this horse is four to one. Uh, I'm picking another right, one. Let's send it. All right. Who are you taking? And then we'll send it down to our veteran track caller. I kind of like uh, Solingery by my. All right. That's enough. Hurry up. Okay. Mo, take it away. <laughs> As they make their way around the opening turn, and this is why predict, you know, being a director and an announcer is a great job. Here we go, around the opening turn, opening quarter in 25 change, live from La Jolla. That was a good opening call, too. Sun and snow shows the way over Gracie, La Jolla, down the rail. Then comes Common Law White in third. Solid Jerry in fourth now in front of back of the truck as the action is heating up. Down past the clubhouse for the first time. It's Maiden Arms making a surge here to the wire. They go around again in this 12 furlong. Everybody wave to your current leader. It's sun and snow, sun and snow with a three length lead over Greasy, La Jolla down there at the rail. Still no change back to Sol and Jerry in third and made it arms back at the truck fifth. But here comes Martian Corruption. 
Martian corruption looking for some room there, but oh, might have been blocked off by Sol and Jerry as they are backtracking here as Eclipse Pursuit got the best of it and starts to make their move on the outside. Three quarters come and gone, 115. No change up top for Sun and Snow as they are starting to open up here on the competition in the opener here on Derby Day. Down the back stretch, here we go. Three quarters come and gone now, Sun and Snow, but the crowd is starting to catch on them. Gravy La Jolla made it arms, Martian Corruption, biggest push from the back, and 4.3 to 1, not too far off the favorite here, but got about seven lengths they want to make up. One mile in the books for 140. We are cruising now into the final turn. Sun and Snow with Gravy La Jolla and Martian Corruption now off the rail, look at Patel in the opener, and passes Gravy real quick, and now has their eyes set on the leader, but Sun and Snow will not be caught here as they are now getting ready to make their way down the final home stretch and here they go shake them up and head for home sun and snow that lead is gone martian corruption gonna eat them up here goes martian corruption now pokes the nose in front and pulls ahead by a quick two sun and snow falling apart greasy la jolla now trying to battle for second and sal and jerry might be looking on here as martian corruption is long gone beautiful move on the final turn martian corruption greasy la jolla and bastard Wow. I mean, uh, what an uh, excellent result there. So I was I was pretty shocked with Sun and Snow, like I thought maybe wiring there for a bit. But then I, you know, I was looking at the form. Shout out to PFLDRF.com. Uh, Amazing. Folks. Yes, please and, tune in you know, for that. Checking out, uh, you know, I guess what, why did everyone pick Sun and Snow so hard? Obviously from Blue Elder um solid uh win play show but you know 12 furlongs that's a long race i'm not sure if we saw that you know sun no. snow she that she was a, a dominator there i mean i don't know it's always hindsight 2020 right but looking back at uh at this one it's sort of like well why did that get bet so hard or pick so so heavy or I, I mean, guess Martian Corruption, though. I don't know. What am I looking at for that one either? Zero. You're looking at zero. Martian Corruption. So these are, <laughs> I mean, these were all two year old yeah. Phillies. When you're looking yeah. at Martian Corruption, Martian Corruption, interestingly, also a ton of great odds, uh, a ton of action, rather, on this horse. Martian, Martian Corruption, about even, honestly. Uh, just a little bit, a little bit off of the, the pick, Sun and mm -hmm. the main pick, Sun and Snow. Um, still coming in at four to one and had zero data at uh 12 furlong so yeah really interesting yeah. i mean there were there were strong full there were strong uh fillies all through this and um mm -hmm. i mean it but it looked very dominant by both of these horses the odds on favorite horses battling sun and snow losing yeah uh, i mean martian corruption i guess you know you you got to go back and look at the bloodline uh eh, looking trying to finally you know an ss minus heart on mom ss minus heart on dad S stamina, S plus stamina. So, you know, definitely bred a router, but I, that was, uh, yeah, I guess I wouldn't have noticed that either. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, solid race, but big brain stables, man. You never fade big brain stables here. They got, yeah, they have five. ammunition. Never, never yeah. fade big brain stables. That's the Endless number one. Or, or soulmate, or really everyone. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. You can't really fade any of them. They're all so good at this point. Um, Anyway, all right, so what's the next race on the old docket? We're, we're moving through quite a chunk this evening. Uh, we're going we to Bourbon seven County. Races. Bourbon County Stakes. Yet Bourbon again, County. my favorite. Did you know that Sunnyside Bluffs, California is Bourbon County? I didn't know that. It is. Well, you know, there's a lot of it's, – it's yep. it's, we're, we're living in a new global era, you know, yep. where everything's just virtual world. It could be anything, no, anywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, this is at D Stables Racetrack. We got 14 horses running in this wonderful grade one race. This is a good one, a five furlongs. I know Mo, our race caller, will be happier with that one. Doesn't have to talk so much. Uh, <laughs> a quick one. Just a, yeah, few, yes. a, few, sna a few snappy uh, zingers and mm -hmm. it's over, you know. A couple uh, of lines about a Buick or something and he's done. You know, uh -huh. moving. Uh, uh, so, tail. yeah, look at <laughs> yeah, look at for tail and they're across the line. So, this one, uh, you know, looking at a pretty even field here, just a couple of favorites picked down. Again, a lot of value to look at. A lot of value. Um, yeah. So I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, Pocono's got a few in here. You, again, never fading Pocono and S plus in Chaos at Dawn on, well, I guess off pref though. So, you know, you are looking at. Rose. I mean, so a lot of these mm -hmm. horses ended up off pref, it seems like. Like mm -hmm. the majority of them ended up off pref because they're firm. 
But Lussie's yep. Wooden Rose, easy favorite, four to one. Everybody else sitting at almost twenty to one. Like there's there's a uh, ten right. horses in this race sitting twenty to one, and I would start looking there first. Uh, when when you have twenty one mm -hmm. horses, that's what I'd look at. Um, yeah, that's, never. I, yeah, no chalk for me. We went over this last uh, Kentucky Derby. Mm -hmm. No chalk for Ian. Of course, I don't pick any of the pools in this, but uh, not not chalky for me. I think I would be looking at any kind of value across here. I mean, looking at you know chaos at dawn looks like went off at. 9.6 in the morning and now at 19 well it's again firm though yeah. tough one is anybody those, soft those breath yeah there's well, deep, there's a few horses deep, gandalf the gray like out of gandalf GDG. of course gandalf the gray honestly gandalf the gray um uh -huh. i think that we i think it, it wasn't it last kentucky derby that i was so excited about gandalf the gray wasn't gandalf the gray wait i'm a pretty second. sure you were gandalf is the seven horse there and, uh, I know we got to get better at telling our producer what number the horse is. The uh, seven horse Gandalf, which is, uh, yeah, formidable. I mean, for sure, right? Has got coming a lot in, of runs, in a lot of history. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got a lot of action, and it makes sense looking at its record. Um, 64 out of Pelinor, everybody. out of previous Derby winner Pelinor, but Pelinor, maybe that's right. bad because Pelinor was a long distance horse. I don't know. Do you think that uh, Gandalf has got the sprints? I mean, apparently, he's been running exclusively. It's all he uh, runs in, yeah. in sprints and obviously uh, hits the podium like pretty much every time he runs. So, uh, yeah, hard to fade this one, especially on prep, whereas everyone else is does not yeah. like the. Nobody I mean, it makes sense. Sport. What about Wakan Fields? What about, about Wakan Fields at a tombstone? I mean, so this horse has hit the podium number nine at the time. Number nine, Wakan mm -hmm. Fields, four years old, also Pelinor Sire, 52% uh, yep. on the podium, 31% win rate, though. So that's pretty high. Um, competitive mm -hmm. with the favorites here. Uh, Wakan Fields, um, with the, I mean, with the 79 max fleet, I mean, is that is that comparable? Like, it, it, it's best race that it's run so far, 79 at four. Uh, maybe yeah. in its prime, maybe not. Uh, Interesting I mean, to see, too. I mean, just two races ago, just like uh, two days ago, uh, edged out Gandalf. And, you know, so actually, mm -hmm. but then lost to Early Morning Riser, the six horse. So... Uh, that, that's always an interesting one. You go back and look at these uh, again on pfldrf.com. Wonderful mm -hmm. site. You can actually, you know, check out and see anything that's in the bold text on the right. You can see when they've uh, lined up against each other. So early morning riser has knocked out everyone in this field the last two races. So maybe this four-year-old is, uh, you know, right at its moment. It's uh, that or seems maybe like we're looking at the old. Maybe it's time for the reverse bounce. Maybe right now he's uh, surging, and I don't know. That's a good. True. That's good value. But we got about thirty seconds to post time. Value. Hopefully our, hopefully our announcer has uh, figured out his microphone situation. Uh, are you there, Mo? Can you hear us? Yeah, we're here. <laughs> we're here, boss. We're down at the track. We are. Uh, they're lining them up right now. We got about twenty seconds till post time. Uh, twenty know. seconds. Twenty seconds. Yeah, don't I just, I'm gonna take this twenty seconds to say when when you let Ian look at this field. It, the picks are already in, and that's unfortunate for everybody making picks now because Ian's a sharp. Don't don't fade Ian. Don't fade Ian's picks, man. I saw him, I'm I saw not him picking him. anyone yet. I don't even know. Like I just, it is interesting to see uh, where they're coming across here, though. So it is. we'll head it down to Mo. Uh, I'm not sure. I think maybe I would take a, you know, two, six, seven, exactly box. Mo, take it away. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. And I know you guys didn't hear me last time in chat, but happy Derby Day. It's time for another major race here on Photo Finish Live, Bourbon County Stakes, live from D-Stables Racetracks, D-Stables Raceway. And they're off and running out to the lead quickly. There goes Lucy's Wooden Road, too much tempo on the outside, Bubble Rose down at the rail. Snow Shepherd runs along here in fourth in the early going in front of Gandalf to Gray at 4.20 to 1. And Ecstatic King going to round out the leaderboard here as they make their way into the first and only turn. And there's five furlong left turning up there on the dirt. Soft track for this great one action. And GBG Genetics runner Gandalf the Gray eating it up in the early going opening quarter at a modest 24 change. No rush as Lucy's Wooden Rose going to sneak on by down at the rail. Lucy's Wooden Rose, a Bumble Rose, having ourselves a little bit of a rose party here around the bend. And Gandalf the Gray struggling to keep up, but here he goes down the center of the track. Gandalf the Gray has them lined up, fresh off his quest from the ring. It's Gandalf the Gray going right on by, pokes the nose in front, takes it over from Lucy's Wooden Rose. 100 meters to go. 
battling back. It's going to be Lucy's Wooden Road and Gandalf the Grey, but Gandalf the Grey holding strong here. And still not going to let you pass over Caius at Dawn and Lucy's Wooden Rose. <laughs> Uh, yep. Shall not pass. <laughs> A strong showing from Gandalf. Yeah. All right. Well, so what I said two six seven looks like my two fell apart. My six uh, also fell apart. Well, <laughs> hey, you know what? You win some, you lose some, as they say. Uh, that was uh, the the five snuck in there out of nowhere. Made at arms. We didn't even look at made at arms. Uh, uh, uh Out well, of that's, uh, that's Night nice. Saturn. That's a strong uh, bloodline Absolutely. there, of course. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and say that, you know, Gandalf the Grey, I wouldn't be surprised to see Gandalf the Grey uh, next season uh, uh, in a race here because this horse likes to show up on big days. I mean, I remember, I definitely remember nerding out last season over this horse <laughs> watching it grab a big win. So, yeah, that's true. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, hey, good race. Congrats again to GVG, a legend in our ecosystem and mm -hmm. our community. He has yes, been a benevolent uh, here. Being. GVG. Oh my goodness, yes. We we could not love GVG more. He's got honorary race series still named after him, I believe, right? The After Darks are still the GVG yes. shout yeah, sometimes. out. Sometimes, if they're mm -hmm. not changed. Sometimes, yeah. that's great. Awesome. Um, cool, so moving on to the next race, I think we have the old Bluegrass Commemorative, right? Good. Bluegrass uh, Commemorative on Shing Mun. My favorite. Uh, One of these yes. seasons we'll change this, but heading to Hong Kong for uh, Bluegrass is always really a classic movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to. They have to have some fans there. They have to have some. They got to. I bet they like bluegrass. Can, can they? Oh, you're thinking it's a bluegrass music? Okay, I was thinking the actual bluegrass fib. Well, I think it's both. Yeah, I think it would okay. be in it. Yeah. How deep does it go? Unsure. Unsure. Is it my? I can't comment. I can't comment on that. Yeah, that's true. You know what they call uh, like new grass is like a new style of like these, you know, that's what they called it when I was in college where they like didn't want to feel lame because they were playing bluegrass. So they would say, oh, no, man, we're a new grass man, which you is know, still lame that's bluegrass. That's the alpha right there. I'll check that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, uh, there were a couple good bands, you know, but anyway, back on over to uh, bluegrass mm -hmm. commemorative. So at this point. We're looking at one of my favorite horse names in the whole game, Hipster Doofus. I mean, Hipster I would, Doofus, I would, yeah. I would drain the IRA on Hipster Doofus if this was a real uh, the one horse, just because of that name. I don't even look at the stats. Like, what Hipster a Doofus name. looks good. I mean, this horse has a lifetime win percent. This horse has won twenty five percent of its races, podium sixty three percent of its races. Uh, but not even, getting old not though. Even, say what? Getting old. So yeah, a, six years old. You know, might be might be fading yeah. a little. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the max fleet, for instance, at eight furlongs, it ran a seventy nine average fleet seventy one. So is it trending down? Does it have another? Does it have another one in the tank? Does it have a uh, state of the union mm -hmm. to deliver tonight? We'll see. Well, I just have to find out. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah that's just, who knows? That's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> so then, <laughs> yeah, propped up with some serious uh, amperage. This uh, I wonder if Hipster Doofus has got something in it. I, I don't know. I mean, it's a sloppy track. Uh, mm -hmm. Doesn't run great on sloppy. Like in its history, it seems to do okay. Um, but typically has has actually won races on. Well, it's got one win on sloppy, I suppose. Well, it's anyway, we can move down. So, so Hipster Doofus has Look two at... wins on the slop, thirteen mm -hmm. starts, uh, and a seventy-six point nine percent podium. So, I mean, looking yeah. at a race like the Bluegrass Commemorative, I mean, have you, are you going to, like, necessarily fade? The, I mean, this would be a nice long shot pick to just scoop the show pool, at least, uh, in my mind. Yeah, that would be, yeah. that would throw up in my exacta box, probably, no matter what, just with the name. Um, so, I know a lot of, a lot of uh, folks out there looking forward to Abominable Snowman's performance. Yeah. That's uh, been a, a legendary horse, I believe, probably going into stud next season. I'm not sure. We don't know. I'd but, imagine. Um, yeah. We'd imagine. But there's, I mean, that's pretty good value. 10, 10 X on that with versus uh, feats of strength, which uh, yet another Seinfeld reference. I'm all about this. I mean, how, how many Seinfeld references can we cram into one race? And I'll bet all of them. Not enough. I would pick them every one. Yeah, not enough. That's true. Um, but I don't know. Feats of strength. Do you think that's a shoe in there with the chalk fib? Feats of Strength is the kind of horse that I would absolutely drill a place and show pick into because at least, I, I mean, like, of course, the, the odds are coming in on this horse five to one in a field where the, the odds go up to, you know, maybe the average is like at least at least two, at least uh, double digits. 
Uh, so feats of strength, like drilling, drilling something into a podium, uh, a podium promise here with 90%, 90% chance mm. to hit uh, is not mm. a bad idea uh, to me yeah. because definitely the odds didn't stack up exactly the same uh, across the board in terms of second and third place. So that would be an easy pick to me. Uh, but there's a lot, there's actually a lot of decent competition here. I mean, you got like Costa, I'm just looking, I'm just scrolling randomly Costa 80% on the podium. Uh, weak knees, Willie, 75% on the podium. I mean, this is a strong field, um, yep. a strong field with a lot of strong horses. I mean, I could see an upset here and I would, I'm always trying to take the upset. Of course, the last two races we're watching the chalk, those chalk W's, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I think the audience is getting, the audience is getting, uh, astute. However, any given, uh, any given Saturday, you know? Any yeah. Given yeah. Anything can happen. One of these big, uh, long shots. Yeah. I mean, Venom was a pretty heavily, uh, revered horse that i know the the four horse there i don't know if a producer has but uh i don't know if he's lived up to the expectations i mean so far okay right i mean not like the end of the world had a couple of big wins right um but venom was uh everyone had great hope for i mean the a very very rich bloodline out of solonaut i mean Ven uh, venom took the artemis cup venom won the mm -hmm. artemis cup so the bluegrass commemorative, which is indeed a right turf race, but it's eight furlongs. So maybe a little bit out of the pocket of this horse. Uh, I mean, if you look at the horse's lifetime stats, there's definitely a little bit of a dive when it comes to eight mm -hmm. furlongs. I mean, if its lifetime is 50, the podium, 50% uh, podium, the uh, eight furlong podium is 42%. So maybe not exactly where it wants to be, but again, still a strong horse. And that horse showed up big that race. And that horse kind of came out of yeah. nowhere. I mean, yeah. So. Yeah, that's a that's something to look out for, I suppose. I mean, looking at you yeah. know uh, Venom's race times, he sort of like feels like it's kind of a middling. It's good, it's strong, but it hasn't like blown away any records. But at the same time, if you're taking home an Artemis Cup, then you're kind of good to go. If you're winning the majors, then uh, you're still you know holding up on yeah. the bloodline. So that's you might want to yeah. You, you, maybe you'll show up today. You're winning the majors. Maybe yep. you'll show up on a day like today. That's and if you look at his mm -hmm. recent record, uh, I mean, this horse is running basically just running stakes races and has a really great, you know, second, first, second, uh, all these races recently, just kind of like doing in the pocket. Um, and some of them are a little bit longer, but it does have a win at nine uh, out of 15 racers. So not a bad long shot um, for sure. Right. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think um, if I'm, if I'm out here heading down to the, to the machines at uh Shing Mun <laughs> for the bluegrass, the commemorative i'm probably going uh nine uh four one exact a box where are you going mm. if you had any uh i mean i know you may be a straight a straight picker but I, I always love the box yeah the box i mean in terms of uh i think i do like um i like sign of the times i like i do like hipster doofus for the podium but abominable looks good i think i might fade abominable at 10 to 1 uh mm -hmm. not necessarily my first pick here it seems like a, it's a little bit out of its out of its grasp i think that um i don't know i kind of like i honestly kind of like weak knees willy uh weak knees willy <laughs> the great name he's willy well, yeah. we're starting in five well, uh you know five or ten bad. seconds here so let's definitely head down to the old track and chat let's see your picks drop them in the chat everybody's quiet and dinner Please, let's yes. see what you got we'll see the picks and we'll make fun of you if you miss good luck man <laughs> Welcome back to the track, Jack. It's time for another major race here on Photo Finish. We got them all lined up in the gate. And they're rolling live from Xing Moon Race Course. It's a bluegrass commemorative. Feats of strength shoots out to the lead along with Venom in between horses. Little Gun in the orange silks moves out in third in front of Hipster Doofus. Back in fifth in the early go, and there goes Costa, 9.4 to 1. And Niala going to break out the leaderboard as they round it out into the opening turn of this eight furlong right turning affair on the turf. Sloppy track here for this great one action, and it's Feats of Strength trying to hold on up top. Wild pressure down low from Little Gun and Hipster Doofus as they are trying to attack this leader in the early part of the race. Back and forth, here comes Niala with an early surge. Champagne Fever moving up as well as Casa. And these horses do not want to let Feats of Strength get away from them early, but that is exactly what's happening. Four furlongs in the books, half is gone in 49 and change, but Feats of Strength continues to open up now with a three-length lead. 
back to the rail. Here comes Hipster Doofus right on cue. Little gun in between with Costa and Sign of the Times looking to make a nice little push here from the back of the pack. But here we go, round around the far bend. Who's going to win? And there goes Costa. Costa with a beautiful move to sneak on by the leader. Now it's Costa's race to lose. Costa, Hipster Doofus, Feats of Strength, these two locked in, but here we go, pop the cork as Champagne Fever now finds some room and blazes on by, Champagne Fever now with a three length lead, Costa, Feats of Strength calling it a day as Champagne Fever, Costa, Champagne Fever, it's going to be Champagne Fever with a perfect move here, Ooh. down the home stretch, Champagne Fever over Costa and Little Gun. Oh my goodness. Value value on the board. I love it. Pop the cork with champagne fever. Let's see. I had a 149, so didn't hit anywhere close. Well played. <laughs> uh, but hey, 8-11-7. Congrats to Champagne Stables. Champagne fever. That's a good one. I, I agree with uh, the chat here as I'm looking. Did anybody have champagne? I'm rolling through. It didn't look like anybody had any picks. We're all struggling tonight. <laughs> oh, did see a little Costa. bit of action. Came in nine to one when the top when the horse that when the horses that got no mm -hmm. action came in twenty three to one. Champagne Fever nine to one. Got a little action. Yep. So congratulations if you did pick Champagne Fever. Nice yeah. job. Congrats Excited. and congrats to the owner, Champagne Stables. That's a that's a big win there. It's uh, a nice payday. Yes. When the when the big lights are on, shows up. Uh, Pocono so saying "Sign of the Times." Great song. I love "Sign of the Times." So that is a solid Prince song. I'm I'm sure Mo agrees. He's, he's into that. Fib's probably never heard it. Freaking, you know, I baby. haven't. Uh, yeah. Who's Prince? Yeah. I know. Prince, I mean, it's I a just... weird one to say sign of the times because it was a sign of the times like in the late 80s. So it wouldn't really apply because you wouldn't understand, man. But I, I, I tried to keep up here with we are. references. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I was trying to do. That's true. Yep. Yep. That's true. Not, All not right. So next up, one of my favorite races, the Mint Julep Memorial. I mint love memorial. a good mint julep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we've got about six minutes to post time. Looks like the pick windows are closed. Another monster field. I mean, these horses are getting better and better and better as we go. This is what we love to see. The competition is heating up. So right now you've got a 3.1. I mean, is Capella that much of a lock, lead pipe lock? Uh, the six horse for you there, uh, producer man. What do you think, Fib? Do you take the six and, and drain the IRA or no? I mean, the six. So Capella coming in three to one. I just don't like anything less than five to one. I feel like I just like I'm just not interested. I'm just, not interested. <laughs> just the number. But, but honestly, it's Capella. yeah, just the number. I just don't like I like to hit big, man. That's just how it is. Uh, but it, there's yeah. definitely a good case to be made for Capella. Capella, 100 percent on the podium. Nine tries, nine hits all on the podium with five of those being a win. Uh, looking amazing, and honestly, at eleven, at, a, at this track. distance, you mean? Okay, yeah. All right, at this sorry, distance, yeah. sorry, yeah. At, at eleven yeah. furlongs, uh -huh. I mean, its overall win percentage is vastly diminished from this. Its overall win percentage twenty seven percent, but this horse is in the pocket at eleven fifty five percent, double, almost more than double, actually, the amount of its normal win percentage, uh, I believe. So, looking really mm -hmm. good here. Looking good. I mean, the the question when you see a horse like that is. Do you do you fade like where can I fade this horse? Where can I fade this horse? Can I make a compelling case in the field uh, for a fade? And I mean, I'm yep. looking. I scrolled down a little bit. Arcanus Tombstone. Arcanus looks pretty good. Sixty four percent on the podium. I mean, when you see a hundred percent on the podium, and then you look at sixty four percent on the podium, you're like, Ugh. but today, a day like this, a big day under the lights, like could heart make a difference? I mean, Arcanus fully on prep. All these horses are fully on prep with tons of stars. Maybe a few of them are off. The boss is off. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's looking good. So, I'm seeing uh, quite a few in the chat so far. Looks like we're hearing uh, a couple of sixes. A lot of people loving the six. What about Sticking the 14? With, uh, Capella, I do see a, a 14 from Liberty Tree, 14 from Bags, both in the chat. Kalashnikov, so Kal Kalashnikov, not Kalishnikov. I don't even I mean, know. I guess it is a, pronounced Kalishnikov. Yeah, is it? I, is this a play on words? So. We don't know. That's what we're doing here live. But Kalashnikov just got sniped by Capella last time they ran against each other at 11, uh -huh. at right turf good. So I don't know. You think he's got a bone to pick? I don't here. see you think any wins of, Kalash of Kalashnikov over Capella. I don't see any wins of Kalashnikov mm -hmm. over Capella in the last 12 races or so. Um, so, But this yeah. horse is another one of these horses with 100% win rate. But an overall, its overall win rate is a little bit more compelling, sitting at 42%. I mean, now, is that a, is that a question of what the owner has done? 
or is that a question of the horse's strength? I mean, there's always something to be uh, gauged there. True. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you trust this owner? Uh -huh. that this is uh, the ac absolute accurate way to race this horse. I never trust anybody. You never know. Um, I don't know. We're hearing another on the 14 pick. in the chat. Uh, I have a long shot team. pick. Does anybody All like right. the 13? Anybody like the 13? Uh, Drowny Park. Okay. I just have this feeling about Drowny Park horses and the way that he races. Mm. I feel like he's an astute player. Uh, plays it well. I've seen I've seen some really interesting wins out of Johnny Park in terms of the kind of horses mm -hmm. that win. And this horse, Dirty, Dirty Jane, Jane, 23 to 1. I love a 23 to 1 horse, man. 23 to 1 with an 83% on podium rate and a 33% win rate. I mean, that's pretty – that's like mm. kind of close, man. And it's Max Fleets looking totally competitive with Kalashnikov. Um, I don't know. That's compelling to me as a, as a, as a fade pick, at least a sprinkle, at least a hedge, you know, against the a hedge. I don't know. I, I mean, it feels like just looking at some of these times Capella has thrown up of, of two fifteen uh, on 11 and yeah, not, not many people are sniffing that. Um, that no. for sure is, <laughs> is yeah, one this of the is... things I would, yeah, uh, it's a chalky it night. It has to have. It has to. Night. It has to break bad out of that gate in order for another horse to win. It kind of seems, honestly. But three to yeah. one, it's painful. Three to one is painful. But sometimes a horse yeah. earns those odds. It's just. It's just that. Yeah. Simple. And this is what again. This is one of those reasons I love playing exacto boxes. Is just sort of like, all right, throw that in, and of course you chalk it. It's whatever. But then you got you know mm -hmm. throw two long shots in with it, and maybe you end up with a with a surprise, uh, and maybe maybe ends up uh, somebody taking first, and then you get. A lot better uh, payback. Uh, so Toxic Art looks pretty strong. I mean, looking at... Uh, good horse. Kind of, good horse as far as I remember. Yeah, yeah. This, that's the seven. And I don't know. Let's see. If I'm if I'm trying to kind of come down with something... Uh, see, I mean, you, have 12, so down, you have a yeah. 12K place pool. Like you have a 12K mm. place pool. I mean, I think that you could definitely at least make the case... Um, you could mm. at least make the case for Dirty Jane in the place i think that you could de definitely take like an upset there uh dirty yeah. jane again overlooked um with nothing no, no nothing on top of the house uh so yeah totally I mean, faded I, I don't mind uh amaterasu here um a pretty strong looking horse there now i'm trying to kind of look back at the history trending up or down also amaterasu looks like racing uh, not fully recovered, so that's a scary. Oh wow, taking a chance, uh, gully stables. rolling the dice. Yeah, <laughs> it looks I like that. unless I respect that. I big time, I'm trying to check for sure. It's like yeah, you know, they recover in about half an hour, so I don't think they're going to make it. Um, but Amaterasu has been running gangbusters at eleven. Uh, you'll look at their split times uh, or mm -hmm. in the charts. Um, I mean, yeah, the split times know. are great. By the way, if you guys if you guys are on PFL DRF, you can check out the split times new feature. By the way. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that does help for sure. Well, um, as we get closer and closer to uh, the time here, again, we need to get the chat to fill us in. I want to hear and see what we've got. Uh, what are your picks? We need to know. Fib and I want to know what we've got. Definitely. Sounds like six oh, and the 14 is are the, are the favorites for our watching community here on YouTube. If people are watching on Twitch, I'm sorry, I can't see your chat. So that's just my fault. But here we are, post time, mid jewel memorial. Head on down to the track, Mo. Are you there? Oh, we are here. We are live in the mix from Victoria Raceway, OEV Raceway. Here we go. It's another major race on Derby Day. Photo finish live. Appreciate everybody hanging out online. And they're off quickly out to the lead. There goes Kalashnikov. Kalashnikov with Destroyer. Griswold down at the rail. Back and forth. Here comes Dirty Jane with an early push. The boss runs along in fifth. And Toxic Art in the orange silks at 24 to 1. It's going to round out this top six here as they make their way into the opening turn. Tight field here for the Mint Julep Memorial. Miami Nation runner Kalashnikov still holding on to that lead at three and a half to one, but here comes Biohazard down at the rail. Dirty Jane still third, no change there, but a surging Capella from the back moves up to fourth. Griswold fifth, now make it six as Destroyer with a little bit of a move past the clubhouse for the first time. And here we go to the wire in this 11 furlong right turning affair. But we're going around again. Everybody wave to your current leader. That is 
Biohazard. Biohazard still showing the way here. Past the wire, but Capella, Capella trying to get up there and does so and goes right on by. Now it's Capella with Dirty Jane and Biohazard backtracking all the way to fourth. As we got a new name here, it's Amaterasu. Amaterasu, much discussed here on the pregame as Amaterasu now starts to get going and all makes their move up to third. Back up top though, Capella, that lead about two lengths over Dirty Jane. Amaterasu and Big Goat chasing with Kalashnikov, the early leader. Looks like they might be on a little bit of a coffee break. Uh, could be working a union job here on the backstretch. Tune in, find out as Kalashnikov in fifth. Being tracked only by the boss here at 12-1 to 1 on the board. And here we go. Things are starting to heat up in the middle of the pack. But Capella, Capella is opening up here on the field as that lead now opens up to about five and a half over Dirty Jane. Amaterasu there in tight with Kalashnikov as the boss starts to line him up and knock him down from the inside. Around around the far turn. Here we go. One mile and 139. The pace has quickened. Ladies and gentlemen in the chat. And Capella shakes him up and heads for home. Capella that lead once was six, but now about four as Dirty Jane is flying down the outside of the track. Grabbing hot dogs out of the stands on the way. But Capella looking strong here down to the wire. Past the eight pole. Capella will not be denied here. Holding strong half, half, half of the race over Big Goat and Dirty Jane. The chalk got us spill. The chalk got us. Yeah. Again. Uh, hard to pay that horse. Yeah. What a champion. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Ted Racing hits the win and place together. Mm -hmm. There's no better feeling than seeing that image there. You know, your two silks. I guess the better one would be all three silks. Ah, my girl, Dirty Jane. She dropped mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. Fell apart. Back she, tried, she, she put up a good fight. She put up a good fight. That was a good, honestly, that was a good fade pick, uh, but didn't just didn't materialize there. Uh, can't, you know, I can't mm -hmm. give that up. I, I got to say that I was still kind of right. Right? <laughs> you have to say that you were really very correct. I was almost, yeah, I was super correct. I was, I was right yeah. about that. Right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> in some way well solid congrats again to ted racing our our mythical ted racing uh a solid performance this this stable of ted racings now is becoming absolutely so unbelievable funny. yeah and uh i mean the entire ecosystem out there trying to figure out how to how to get one over on this guy because yeah old ted good old ted i love it i love it yeah, Very Ted making the late entry, becoming a magnate uh, in front of everybody, just what people just watching their horses getting sucked up like a black hole into this stable <laughs> uh, and becoming a force on the field. Every big race, this man is showing up. This yeah. man is doing it big. I mean, you could do it too. You could do it too. You it's pretty need, uh, funny because everyone was so excited. Those first, like, you know, call it three seasons ago, everyone's like, oh man, I can't believe this Ted guy bought my horse. Ah, this is amazing. And then now he's yeah. like dominating all of you with your mm -hmm. own horses that you sold mm -hmm. him. Oh, well, uh, you know, worth what pointing you out, do? worth pointing out, nobody knows who this man is. Uh, anonymous, yeah, I don't, not in Discord, just keeping it very cool and uh, taking gotta be in Discord person. somewhere, just hiding, right? Lurking, all yeah, sure, something. lurking, yeah. His name is like not Ted69. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's your that's your all. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh man, all right, so and now we're up to the old Red River Run. I am Red seeing River in the chat, the old, god, a tradition, an age old tradition. It is, it is a tradition, the Red River Run at Big Brain wow. Fairgrounds. This is a juvenile race. I love a good juvenile. We're all trying to figure out these two year olds. This is a great. Absolutely. One. This is yeah, a they have a whole season behind them. This whole the season, final... but it but a long race. This is a lot of effort. It's, it's a, a mile and a half. Uh, so it I don't is. know. Looking at uh, Urban, one of our new members, I, uh, who I love following his streams as well. Urban's mm -hmm. in the chat saying he dumped. Onto some underdogs in, in Red River Run. He's he's looking for a jackpot. So I don't, I love it. I love you know going for the long shot. So That's Red River Run though. I mean, who's right now? Who's leading the forum? I'm I'm still trying to pull it up. Who's who's got it's the baby steps? Odds right baby now? steps. Wimbledon Turf. Uh, I mean, this horse is a it's a left dirt race. Uh, the but three? Wimbledon Turf with the baby steps horse left dirt. Uh, not a turf. Even though the stables is Wimbledon Turf, this horse is a certainly a dirt horse uh, mm. with two and a half stars. 76 on a recent downturn but 76 on the fleet uh s plus horse um i'd love to look at the record on that horse baby steps 100 percent, but it's only raced one time this horse is yeah. still early it's got a sterling record with one data point 
I so. like seeing the Wimbledon approach here too. Like if you go back and you don't, you don't have to producer, but if, if those watching look at the bloodline, I mean, uh, this is one of those experiments. Wimbledon is trying to move mm. between, uh, he had a full soft pref horse, General Duke as the sire, and then went with California right. Love, a uh, uh, firm. So trying to kind of split the difference, take some of one, some of the other, no one really knows what happens. So I think it's good to see people trying to do that. So you end up with this horse that's got, zero stars and firm but no one knows is that good <laughs> because what happened what happened in the genes you know so i'm excited to see uh it looks like obviously baby steps been looking pretty good on the track so far um a decent interesting strategy to try you never know what the genetic gods will give you um absolutely not i mean but baby steps i mean i'm gonna i'm gonna take everything you said there and i'm gonna say you're right but at the same time when a horse comes in a juvenile if there's any chalk to fade tonight Okay, maybe you guys don't believe me now because we've watched three <laughs> different races where the chalk has taken it. Okay, it doesn't always happen like that, but tonight, and uh, it is a juvenile race. This horse has won one race. And when you look at that 100%, 100% uh, in terms of win rate and podium rate, it's only one data point. Okay, and you mm -hmm. have these other horses here. You have a plenty of other horses that have competitive uh, data. Yeah, what about the 11? Take, out, take a look at the 11 there, uh, uh, Mo, our producer friend. I love Wolof Stables, always a longtime player. This one's, uh, you know, pretty strong looking uh, S plus out of Apollo and Easy. This one, uh, you know, not necessarily tearing up the podium yet, but still also maybe searching for the distance. You know, I don't know. Maybe maybe yeah. 12 is too much, though. I, I, it's hard to say. I mean, it's, it's gone at it three times and it's it hasn't it's hit the podium uh, two times, but in third place. Yeah, so, just but you show, do so. see level up with you see level up kind of kind of not necessarily take it baby. step. I mean, it has a loss against baby steps. It has a loss against Slaco. I mean, there is just there's a strong field here to play. I mean, Kentucky mm -hmm. Rain, for instance, the Kentucky Rain out of Soma. Soma, a, a stable that a stable that has definitely made a name for themselves, a Derby winner, a Derby winning stable. Kentucky Rain, uh, the sire is Elvis. I mean, this this race is a is kind of a mirror of the Derby, but two extra furlongs. Um, so El you know. Yeah. What does that factor in with Elvis? And it is off preference. However, this horse has a 57% win rate. Um, at looking 12. great. At seven yeah, at 12. But uh, at also 12. off pref, right? I mean, it loves the mud. Looks yeah. like it's a looks like it's gonna be a good condition race here. So that's a and tough one. It does one. have a win I, on good. It I has agree. a win on good. Yeah, Kentucky uh, Rain looks really strong. I, I that's a strong Philly for sure. I, I would definitely probably throw 14 in the old box. And I think uh, outside of that, I'm, I might be going Slaco. And I also, I also really like she's a ding dong, even though she, <laughs> she's she's off prep out of D stables. I love the D stables uh, horses. If Aaron's in the chat, I saw him earlier. I'd love to see who Aaron's picking for this race of, outside of the five. Um, but the five is, uh, you know, out of the old D stables, Jaja -ja ding dong. That that horse was, uh, you know, legendary. Can't fade that. Two wins. Two wins out of three tries. I mean, a two-year-old running a 75 max fleet, not bad. I mean, I, I, let me look for a ma – so there's some standout max fleets here. There are. I mean, Crunch has a standout max fleet at this distance. Crunch, man. Actually, let me look at Crunch a little bit. Uh, Crunch. Did Crunch well, get Feb, we're, we're, oh, we're heading down to the track here, so you got to lay it in. Who are you going? I'm going to go 5, 6, uh, 14. I'm writing that down for my exacto box. You got anything? We'll go to Mo. I don't know. I think uh, I think Crunch looks amazing on this on this race. All right, that's your win. Your that's win my win, my win pick. Yeah, I don't have an exacto oh. on this one. Got it. Mo, take it away. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Doing great as always. It is time for the Red River Run. Live from Big Brain Fairgrounds, online. And. Way they go, it's level up. Level up gonna fly out with Vladimir Lenin and then high foot along with Chesterfield in fourth. Crunch runs along here in fifth with Kentucky Rain. And I start to realize I should probably look at some of these names before the race and be trying to announce them. Around the opening bend they go, it's Vladimir Lenin shows the way out of breaking bad stables, bringing their A game, but they're all S horses. Here they go, it's Vladimir Lenin. That lead now two and a half over Crunch. Hey, flip in third. Kentucky Rain starts to advance up in the fourth. And Chesterfield, no change there. No hurry with in fifth. And American Ivory now up into the sixth hole. Opening quarter in 25 and change. Very slow pace here down past the clubhouse. We got three up top with Crunch, 
Vladimir Lenin and Kentucky Rain all vying for that wave past the wire for the first time. And everybody wave to Crunch as Crunch goes by. There goes Crunch here over Kentucky Rain with Vladimir Lenin. The early leader now going to slide on back to third, being joined by American Ivory. American Ivory out there in the pink silks, 23 to 1. But running like the favorite here is they are surging all the way up in the third now. I set on Kentucky Rain and Crunch as these two are locked in battle around the bend. Three quarters in 115, and here we go. Kentucky Rain on the outside, pokes the nose in front. That quick, awkward eye contact and takes over the lead. Kentucky Rain, Crunch, American Ivory, these three, now joined by Hayslip. As Hayslip on the outside, down the center of the track now, is starting to pick up some extreme pace. And here we go, we finally got ourselves a horse race down the backstretch as Crunch goes on by Kentucky Rain. And now it's Crunch to one to catch with four furlongs left to go. Crunch with about a three left lead as Hayslip, that early surge there, down the backstretch actually is now holding up here as Crunch is looking strong and everybody else is playing catch up. Flacco and Vladimir Lenin, these two on the about fifth place here with Kentucky Rain, and there is not much action shaking up as we hit the top of the stretch, and Crunch is looking to take them home. One mile and a quarter, and I've been talking for two minutes. Crunch up top, pacelet, and level up, and level up splits it here, looking for some room, might have found it, and Crunch, Crunch keeps on going, one furlong left, level up now, off the rail, and looking for a tail, here he goes, challenge the leader, goes right on by, at 17 to 1, we're finally going to get it, the chalk has been put away, school is over, it's level up, level up, going to bring it home over Crunch and Hayslip. Wow, look at that, now... I called out level up early, and if you'll remember, I didn't even <laughs> stay level up when I made my pick. So, yes, great give job. Me, please, everybody uh, remember that. If everyone can maybe ch edit the chunk where I said I think level up's good, and then don't show the part where I did not. Solid race out of Wolof. Congrats, Wolof. Mm -hmm. Legendary stable. Love it. Love to see it. Love, love to see it. Wolof has been here just grinding it out. Where did uh, She's a Ding Dong even end up? Did I even did fourth. Did I make any? Oh, fourth. Okay. So she was in there too. She was in there too. Dude, right, she was in there. I mean, she's still in the money. The thing about these races, there's so much. Th these races are so, these purses are heavy, man. Heavy purses. Uh, you're still Bags coming are up full. 25,000 derby for fourth uh -huh. place you're not sad about that you're not sad about that a free race you made it in and you made twenty five thousand derby. you're not sad about that so congratulations to everybody yeah, what are you talking about fourth she's a ding dong ended up in 13th guy looking back here at the did she oh yeah, sorry i was, I was, like, I was like what yeah you're looking at the, wrong. the wrong. Yeah, baby <laughs> steps i mean we all remember baby steps 12th woof so did not have it on that one baby steps yeah nowhere. that was baby steps just yeah, absolutely nowhere. fell apart so yeah congrats again to uh wolof and it's looking at this other wingman stable with crunch and turlingua ranch with uh hayslip for the show congrats to all you mm. guys great race yeah, all yeah, righty my man my man fell off Ugh. hey pretty solid though you were there you were right in striking there most of it, yeah god these 12 furlong ones man i feel bad for old uh mo sheesh uh, hey he's pulling it out he's uh he's pulling he's uh entering the void especially all the travel he has to do flying between all these tracks is quick mm -hmm. got it yeah now he's got to get uh, it now he's got to make his way to churchill downs for the twin spire sprint the first right. major race of, our, of the night here the we go the big the big big major twin spire sprint we got five furlongs it's looking a little sloppy out there on the old dirt Boy, I don't know. This is uh pool on the Kentucky Derby. Have you not seen the yet? I have thing? not. I have it's not. insane. This is looking look amazing. At, well, we got four and a half minutes to Twin Spires. We four and a half minutes to Twin Spires, but you do have four and a half minutes to make your picks on the Kentucky Derby. Last call. Oh, we should, uh, we the should pick, drop the pick there. Those are insane here. Sixty to one uh, on some of these horses. The the least likely horses to win. Still sixty seven to one. Almost seventy to one odds. That's how much it's stacked up here. Uh, the amount of liquidity in this pool amazing beautiful it's beautiful uh, yeah. it is beautiful mm -hmm. it is um beautiful. yeah so uh looking even at the twin spire sprint then i mean we got four minutes we've got a nice uh nice fat purse on the line here I mean, winner taking home two hundred and sixty three thousand derby for uh whoever pulls this one in i mean it looks like odds on favorite is is right there on the rail satin made from silk out of a grape syndicate the one horse 
Uh, I don't know. That's pretty chalky. <laughs> I'm not sure if I would. But this is a tough one, man. I mean, five furlongs with 20 horses is just yeah. like, my goodness. It's just, it's nearly, uh, it's very challenging to figure out what in the heck is going to happen. In that. There's a lot of volatility. I mean, again, I mean, we just watched a set. What was it? A 17 to one horse take it uh, right at the mm -hmm. last furlong. We love it. We love a 17 to horse, a 17 to one horse taking it is an energizing uh, spiritual experience for all of us. And I hope that you all enjoy that. Uh, I, mean, yeah. you have, or, I mean, how about Savage? How's Savage looking on the odds here? That's the uh, seven, the seven horse. The seven horse, 8.4 to one with a record like that. That's a deal. Um, that Out was, of that Wasabi, was, our favorite. Lady Wasabi stables there. Wow, that's, that's a Wasabi. Uh, oh my God, I would love to see Lady Wasabi take a major. That would be amazing. Yeah. That's some. This is a solid horse. You're right. Been definitely at the podium all over and over and over again. Ten races at five furlongs, seven mm -hmm. wins. Okay, eighty percent win rate. Sorry, seventy percent win rate, eighty percent on the podium. This horse likes to win. Um, taking it's wins. Hard to, Ricky, but I mean, did you look at satin from silk? Satin made from silk. I mean, just like does not miss the podium. It's like over and over and over again. But I guess the one prep. thing here, running off prep. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's a good sign for the field. That's, that's a yeah, that a shot. A nice fade, <laughs> nice fade. I mean, you, you got. I mean, you can. <laughs> that's the thing is, you can take both. You can take both. It's a matter of size, right? It's like, hey, mm -hmm. I want to take. You know, I will. I'll. I'll it's like I would like to. I, I would prefer personally to hedge with the chalk. However, you can go mm -hmm. big with the chalk and hedge with the long shot. Maybe that's the wiser way to go about things if you believe the way that the odds have stacked up. I mean, that's another thing. It's like, do you believe how? Do you believe you know? Are you going to go with the pack? Are you going to go with the uh, the, the mm -hmm. majority? Um, that's that's the question that you must ask. Left curve, people. mid curve, right curve. Yeah. What, are you you know, it's the same it? thing. Are you going to mid curve this, this or not? Or not? <laughs> yeah, it's funny how much all these crypto terms like actually fit pretty well with horse racing. Uh, Absolutely great. Right. I yeah. hear you saying, "Oh, there's a lot of liquidity and all these things." I'm like, "What in the world?" But yeah, it actually. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm misapplying it. Maybe I'm misapplying same it. Same thing. Yeah. yeah, it's the same thing. So, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to kind of scroll through quickly here with uh, PFLDRF.com, trying to check out some of their uh, great, uh, like, uh, reports on exactly how the horses run at five furlongs. That is always pretty helpful to take a look at. Um, I'm pretty, I don't know, Kasash, looking pretty strong. Mm. Um, very, very competitive at five and also on pref. So S minus, maybe outclassed here, but also... You know, has actually beat quite a few of the horses in this field. So um, I don't know. You can't necessarily throw out that S minus doesn't necessarily mean anything. I want right? to ask a question. Uh, what mm -hmm. do you think the odds are of Rigel Seven, the 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 five horse taking it? That's it's one of the few horses in the field, Rigel Seven, that I've seen take it over Savage. Okay. Uh, Thirty three, I would, and it's YSM. Thirty three. Uh, I'm recent go win, no. recent over <laughs> well, we've got 20 seconds till we head to the track. Churchill Downs is nice this time of year. I hope you're enjoying it, Mo. Yes. Everybody drop the notes in the chat. Who do you like? I see Bryce going 11 one 17 6 with a super effective box. Mm. Super effective box. What in the world are you betting, <laughs> sir? Uh, 4 6 7 11 for the win play show the, out of bags. Uh, I don't know if I have a win or a box pick here, but I would probably go. I'm going to go 7 uh, 12 and uh, 1. Exact a box. 1 7 12. Head on down to you. Nope. The pouring rain. Thank you again, gentlemen. Yeah, I've got my poncho on here. Just got in from flight. It's live from Virtual Churchill Downs. The Twin Spires Sprint, Great One Action. Online, full house. And they're off. Selena Gomez runs out to lead along with Ricky. Then comes Kasach down to the rail. Quick, quick on the outside. Rose of Olympia runs along in fifth. And Satin made from Silk is going to round out the board here in the early going as this field is making their way into the first and only turn of this five furlong left turning affair in the dirt blink and it's over opening quarter in the books and a speedy 23 and change for selena gomez selena gomez fresh off her music career now running races here on the track and has a two-length lead over kasach 
Ballistic starting to make a move on the outside, angling out. Here comes Satin Made from Silk. Satin Made from Silk looks good, squeezing through right into that suit. And there it goes, right on by Satin Made from Silk. Selena Gomez back to second, quick, quick on the outside. Not going to be enough as Satin Made from Silk lines them up, knocks them down. And Satin Made from Silk going to bring home the Twin Spire sprint over Selena Gomez and quick, quick. Boy. Uh, yep. All right. Satin Made from Silk's pretty good. Now we know. Uh, that was pretty impressive to take down. Look at that great syndicate silks there. Just a solid jockey silk we're staring at right yeah, there. Yeah, shout out to Riptide. Circle. Riptide, uh, longtime member. Congrats. Uh, one of my, not one of, my favorite GIF poster in all of Discord. Oh my God, it's accomplished. Bar GIF none. GIF food. Bar none. Mm -hmm. yes. Congrats again. A great race. Now we are approaching uh historic moment is that correct we are. we are it's a historic moment and man this this pool this pool has eclipsed 400,000 derby um 375,000 derby in the winter pool uh the favorite the odds on favorite today olive harvest at a pocono racing five to one i mean five to one in a pool like this is still nice that's another thing you got to factor in five to one in a pool like this is not bad uh, if you're taking if you're taking size on this race, I mean that's not bad, but uh, you know we'll have to break it down. There is an A plus in this race. That's very interesting. Danger zone. I mean, I ran this down with Mo last night. If you tuned in uh, to the uh, mm -hmm. to the After Dark show, but there are some. I mean, there's some interesting horses in this race. There's some. <laughs> what is happening? Oh, I guess there's a I guess there's an error with the DRF because it's just not showing the preferences of these horses right now. However, however. I see. Yeah. I see. It seems to be working all right for me, but yeah, I, do. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I think it's uh it's worth just taking a look real quick at, at the field if we can. I'd love to see the eight horse if you could pull that up there. Um, Mo, yeah, that Olive is Harvest. Olive Harvest right now, current favorite. Uh, obviously, has run pretty strong in this sort of an environment. Um, I Pocono, a, a very highly regarded stable and trainer. Uh, this this horse is definitely one to not fade, but I agree there are a lot of champions in this run. I mean, Rose of Margarita yeah. right next door in the nine. Uh, I would I would love to say uh, is just as good <laughs> as, as just maybe, as maybe shot. better on paper, maybe mm -hmm. better on paper. And another thing is that this is a yielding race. This is yeah. a yielding race. So Rose of Margarita well entered. Uh, Rose of Margarita competitive stars and left in dirt with all of Harvest. No firm stars whatsoever. So a horse that would otherwise have been mm. at a preference disadvantage is not on a, a yeah. race. Yeah. Yeah, it's possible. And I think it's remiss us to say a, so uh, a special yet heavy and rough, if you scroll over there to the 10 horse, uh, Mo is uh, Soaring Raven. And so uh, those that have tuned in this week and heard, you know, one of our community members has been uh, battling with ALS for many, many years and uh, recently, it's just kind of taking, you know, those final rough steps of uh, hospice care and, and could not be more, you know, bummed out to do it. But it shows the strength of this community. Uh, people have already set up. Uh, if you go check out our site, um, if you go to the homepage there, uh, Mo's pulling it up. We have a fundraiser set up for her family. Uh, we could not love Raven more. Sly Raven has been so great. Uh, this whole time, I mean, playing this game with just an eye gaze technology as her muscles have broke down. I mean, it's just like unbelievable, the community effort. We love her so much. We love her family. And if you have anything that you want to give to help the family out, the kids out for the future, uh, the link is right there. We've already raised, I think, over 12,000 uh, bucks across the crypto and the GoFundMe, which is just, again, this community is amazing. And then what I find so unbelievable as well baltazar stables uh gave and donated his horse uh that's soaring raven he renamed this horse today soaring raven is now you know uh, the the hope because a big hope of sly ravens of ambers was to have a horse that won the derby so i'm pulling for the 10 sorry everyone else but i think uh that's okay to pull for the 10. that's an um, easy pick after that that's an yeah. easy pick um but we we love her and and we just hope for, you know the best that we can it's just one of those things man and it's brutal um it's super so brutal I, but you know soaring raven you know incidentally has a great you shot. think has a shot mm -hmm. this was actually my pick i didn't realize that this was going on um last night when i talked about this this was my pick last night 
Um, I forgot yeah, exactly. Yeah, they just what, renamed her today, right? Or him? Just renamed her. Course, Great looking yeah. horse on the field. I mean, 83 Max Fleet. If this horse shows up today and takes it for Raven, that would be absolutely legendary. Oh, and it's not it out be. of the realm of possibility at all. At all. Because this horse God. looks very strong. So I, great I hope, man. I really hope. Like, uh, you know, I, 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 at some level, I don't hope because there'll be a couple D bags that'll say we rigged it. But like, <laughs> you can, we I all mean, know that you can't. It's we can look at all the stuff and show everything about it. But the um, phew, man, I, I really hope that uh, that's a, a hey, hit the podium at least something, right? You know. Um, but great, anyway, great um, opportunity. To, yeah, great opportunity. So to it's a it's a heavy thing, but we're it shows the strength of this community. We love all you guys. Uh, we love you so much. And um, and hopefully this is a, a special moment, you know. Uh, so, yeah, this is uh, kind of like Cody's wish. If you saw that one, you know, there's just like sometimes we can all rally behind a horse. And this is our chance to do that as a community. And so good luck to Soren Raven, of course. And good luck to, of course, Sly Raven and her family more than yeah. anything. Um, so outside of that, though, uh, we've got a few minutes till post. I mean, you can't fade a few other of these even though they're 35 45 uh, on odds would, would you would you fade a uh a gvg crown of wood horse you know like i sure wouldn't at 27 to 1 like it just seems wild how how uh much of a big range there is on some of these uh it's crazy picks. i mean that's one of the beautiful the things 18, about yeah. a bull like this mm -hmm. yeah i mean this horse i mean crown of wood has has not shown up at 10 but you know, you have these big fields. You have that. You have this kind of day, and some horses just come alive on a night like tonight. Some horses come alive on a night. We've seen it before. Uh, last last season, I mean, we're just we're just seeing like you know, you have to you have to take these things into account when you're making your picks. But of course, it's part of the excitement, just the raw excitement of the game itself. I mean, anything can really happen here, um, mm -hmm. and there is a strong field here. There is a strong field. A lot of contention. Uh, I mean, Grez looks good to me. Two wins uh, out of three attempts at ten. Loggerhead, uh, Loggerhead never, you know, YSM uh, hasn't Wait, managed. Is that the Loggerhead? No, that's out of Loggerhead. Okay, out Grez of Loggerhead. Three. Okay. Loggerhead sire, but you know, Loggerhead mm -hmm. didn't manage to take it. But Grez looks good on paper. Um, strong horse, mm -hmm. 80, 80 on the fleet, Max Fleet. I mean, strong, contentious could easily be up there with the rest of these horses. I mean, all of Harvest, Max Fleet, eighty. So why not? Uh, these yep. horses are three years old. I mean, they, they haven't even maybe maybe a lot of them haven't even run the best race they, they can run. And maybe tonight will be that race. Uh, Violet true. Street looks good out of Scott Street. Violet Street, 33 uh, percent of the podium, two wins out of six starts with an 80 fleet. I mean, how, did, how are these horses going to show up today? Not sure. But I mean, taking wins over Crown of Wood before taking wins over Alleged and Rose of Margarita. Um mm -hmm. At 11, what you, though. What do you think about a horse like uh, Tidal Wave? You know, we've only got about 45 seconds here. So Tidal Wave is a uh, the, the 16 horse, S-plus mm -hmm. rated, but but a right turning, a right dirt horse. Like, what does La Jolla know that we don't? That the, maybe this horse has range. You know, you see some of these horses, and they just have range. They just come at it. I mean, some horses don't. Some horses, they'll just, like, you run them out of their pocket. They're like, eh, I can't do that. But some horses can and some horses will just take those races uh, completely out of the blue. We've seen it before. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's a possibility. Yeah. It is of, always interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, we had our, our real life, our real life horse had sort of that like fear of the gate, you know, and I always thought of that as like he had a poor start rating, <laughs> you know, like that's just sort of what I thought he like would get kind of freaked out and spooked out of the gate. And uh, so, there, but it was like, then in my head and as our team you know in real life we end up saying well let's just try and get longer races to kind of offset that you know mm -hmm. scare mm -hmm. at the beginning then maybe he'll you know because i guess the, you know they all all horses want to run in a pack no matter what so uh, anyway we're going live head on down to the derby good luck to everyone involved we love you all mo hope you're staying dry do your thing bro brother thank you gentlemen excellent job again Waited all season for it. It's derby time, and they're off and running. It's Rajin over Crown of Wood. Constellation gets out in third as they head out to shoot. Violet Street runs along in fourth in front of Supersonic Rose. 
and Rose of Margarita in six here, but it's Derby Day. You know we don't stop there. Wait, there's more. It's Supersonic Rose. Gonna backtrack here now along the middle of the track. Here comes Danger Zone, that A-plus that Pib loves so much. There's Danger Zone trying to find some room back of the pack. Here comes Soaring Raven, fan favorite. Soaring Raven finds some room, picking them apart here in the early going. Also coming from the back, there goes Tidal Wave, product market fit, and looks like Mojo there on the extreme outside as we have somehow made our way through almost 20 horses here on the call. Around the opening turn, Violet Street picks things up in the early going, takes over the lead, and that lead is only about two over chasing Rajin. Back to a consolation, they move up as Rajin might have clipped heels with themselves, scared of their own shadow. Not quite sure what happened there, but backtracking all the way off the board. Violet Street in the meantime loves to see it as Constellation now up to second. Sajiv Khabib now making a move here along with Jumex as Constellation is backtracking. Tidal Wave finds some good room and there's Soaring Raven. Soaring Raven in six and looking to do some damage here. Into the turn, three quarters in 114 and things are heating up top. It's Violet Street, Tidal Wave. These two have been duking it out for quite some time. All setting it up for Jumex and potentially Soaring Raven here and Sajib Khabib also looking in contention. Round around the far bend they go. Here we go, it's Tidal Wave. Tidal Wave shakes them up and we're heading for home. Jumex down low pokes the nose in front, takes over the lead as Tidal Wave falls apart like an old Buick. Constellation with a move. Violet Street, no shot there. Soaring Raven trying to make a push for the board as Jumex is looking to bring this one home from the back, 23 to one. And here we go, it's gonna be Jumex to the wire, bring it over Tidal Wave and Soaring Raven. It's gonna be Ooh. Jumex. Shout out to JPEG Lord Stable with Jumex oh. over Tidal Wave and Soaring Raven. Taking a third place here in the Derby. Love to see it. <laughs> wow. Oh my God, my heart was racing, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I was like, there were like tears coming down my eyes. I was like, come oh, on, go oh, on, Lord. do it. <laughs> Just congrats, Soaring Raven hits the podium. Oh, seriously, that was uh, emotional. <laughs> I was like watching a little box, a little, little tin move. I'm like, come on, little tin box. Jumex, really man, see. 23 to 1 on a pool like this. 23 to 1 wow. on a pool like this. Yeah. That's, a, that's a huge one. Huge congrats. Yeah, don't want to don't want to knock down that at all because, of course, an unbelievable uh, race and, and Jumex with a huge Kentucky Derby win. Uh, unreal to see JPEG Lord Stables, a uh, 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 a longtime supporter, a mm -hmm. just crypto degen that found his way into photo finish, has a stable manager. He became a our, horse racing magnate. Yeah. Crypto <laughs> degen, horse racing community. magnate, the pipeline. And uh, look at Jumex. That's five straight wins. Uh, this horse is going to probably hit the stud barn strong, if I had to guess. Absolutely. Um, I mean, this horse, this is one of those awesome picks. I love this pick because, you know, you know, last night I'm looking. We're looking through. We're looking through this field, Mo and I, and it's like you have a nice, a solid day, a solid, at least, you know, a solid day to look at these. And like Jumax is like one of those horses that on paper at ten, you know, never has never won. Didn't even They're, race at ten. Um, they didn't even yeah. try. They didn't even seem to Not really much. run them at ten. Times. Only yeah. three times. So you yeah. don't have a lot of data there out of forty three lifetime starts. But when you look, like you said, Ian, like when you look at these finishes recently, you know. Mm -hmm. on, a, on a hot streak you know yep yep surging uh, at the right time to hit the stud yeah. barn at max value that's a uh, way to go congrats again to jpeg lord that was uh, an unbelievable race thanks so much everyone for joining us tonight um again a special heavy sad emotional great all the emotions uh evening tonight um and, and again, we, we can't thank you enough for tuning in, supporting us, supporting Sly Raven and Amber through all of this. And, and uh, there's things that are bigger than games and bigger than, you know, our day to day minutia. And I think this community has shown that's kind of what it is. Like, even though it may feel like we're a bunch of just people arguing or hanging out in a discord, it's, it's much bigger than that. The support and the, and the camaraderie that this game and this community has made is, is uh mind-blowing to me and I'm, I'm so thankful to have you all and um and and fib thank you to you for uh, for being here and grinding it out for growing the mullet out i really appreciate it thanks I did, to mo. I tried, I tried so hard i just concentrate <laughs> thanks to thanks to mo of course for the great calls as usual and, and for helping run the stream 
community, I love you all. And uh, we can't wait to do this one again. We'll see you bright and early Monday morning on Foles Day. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully uh, lots of exciting action. Then I think the other announcement that I could tease is that starting next season, season 13, there will also be majors in the mid distance. So we saw majors, you know, again, these sort of big juiced majors like the Derby, the Twin Spire oh, Sprint. Yeah. There will now be one for the mid distance. Those folks that were hanging around and uh, let's see, what would that be? That's uh, seven, eight, nine furlongs. If that's your, yeah, that's your go to. Me? Yeah. yeah. What about you? Now you're now you've got no excuse to hit the podium in a big race like this. Mm -hmm. So we can't wait to see you all on the track. Thanks again for tuning in. Signing off for tonight. Over and out. <laughs>